Um, so you were talking, we were trying to kind of come up with themes, um, and one of the pieces that you brought forward was talking about um, fluency. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was a great topic to try and cover because fluency, well, of course you're fluent or people speak English or you must speak Spanish mm -hmm. or what, you know, there's, it's just a kind of a broader picture. And so we thought we'd break that down a little bit for you. Yeah. So um, what kind of struck in my mind and why this came to came to mind for me is, you know, that we sometimes wouldn't will be checking in uh, at an appointment and talking with the, the front desk registration, PSR, whatever title, um, you know, you have for those individuals. And, you know, the, the, they might indicate that, you know, the patient has already uh, arrived and, you know, but, you know, they spoke English perfectly well. I don't really think that they need an interpreter. Yeah, duh. Or they'll push through an appointment and, and say, oh, well, they've already registered, they did good with themselves, so they're back in with the nurse already, and I don't think we need you, you know. And so it's it's concerning because sometimes you know, people will um, have a, an idea that somebody speaks in a language really well, mm -hmm. really fluently, because they can speak those things really well and really fluently in very targeted, very right. specific settings. Right. So I always look at it like you might on the patient side, so a patient who you've requested an interpreter for, they might be, a, be able to talk to their neighbor really well. Mm -hmm. And they might be able to be in a work environment super easy. But people forget the complexities of healthcare. Mm -hmm. And so the other thing that happens is nobody wants to seem quote unquote stupid. And so nobody's gonna, like, if, you, if you're moving them along in the encounter, they're just gonna roll with it and do the best that they can, but there's a lot of other things that may be happening in their mind um, that are kind of red flags, I guess. Mm -hmm. So um, language is very complex, and to, to, to date, you know, um, I've never met a human being who has been able to read a, another person's mind or to yeah. know what another person knows. We verify knowledge and understanding through communication. Mm -hmm. And so when we don't have communication that has, um, when we don't have ways to, to read somebody else's mind, the only way we can uh, understand or verify understanding is just through through communication, asking a question and then having the person maybe explain back or do something that really verifies that they've understood, just like you would in a monolingual encounter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other thing that happens, too, is that people will say, well, do you want an interpreter? No, I don't want an interpreter. But understanding that the interpreter is really there for the healthcare providers. So the job is really complex. There's a lot of years of schooling. There's a lot of ongoing training. We'll get to that later. We're excited to talk about education. But there's a lot of there's a lot that goes into the encounter itself. And so an interpreter isn't there necessarily to help the patient or support the patient's needs. They're there to help and, and support the provider needs. So in healthcare, it can be something as simple as I have a runny nose that won't stop, or I have an ongoing cough, or I stubbed my toe, or I need stitches. Those are all pretty, in the world of healthcare, you could almost look at them as pretty straightforward issues. But uh, the cough may turn into a complex respiratory issue that may turn into um, imaging that, you know, find something on the lung, which may lead into um, you know, oncology or pulmonology or or any of the more complex things. So, healthcare is is unique and beautiful in that way, and that it starts with with one thing. But the point of it is to get to the root cause, and that can be complex. And so, an interpreter isn't there to be a friend to the patient. Yes, they speak that language. Yes, they understand that culture. But they're there for the healthcare providers so that they can do their job. And it's really important at every single point. Um, and so that's something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, you know, um, being able to assess somebody's uh, proficiency in a language, and, and, you know, we're focusing on maybe how well the patient speaks English to be able to register. We can apply these same concepts to the medical you know, care team who maybe has learned Spanish mm -hmm. or has learned Absolutely. French or has learned other languages. Even in that context, there's a there's a variety of level of, of proficiency. Yep. Um, so we want to be careful that we don't over apply or assess our own or somebody else's ability to communicate effectively mm -hmm. just because they're able to ask where the bathroom is very well and with no accent. <laughs> like, wow, that was great. Or just because they're able to say what their address and phone number is and emergency contact individuals. Yeah. And so really the key that I'm hearing is that 
you don't want to assess somebody's fluency at registration because it's in the exam room where things get far more complex and that's where the interpreter may really be needed.